Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. Life is good. We're talking about power series now. All right, a power series is super simple. All right, it's it's. I'm just simply going to write it up. You typically write it as uh, the sum n goes from one or zero to infinity of c sub n. Now remember back when we talked about alternating series, we changed a sub n to b sub n. Well, in power series, we're doing c sub n, and then this is going to be x minus a to the n. Okay, this the reason we change it to a C sub n is because power series are special. Now I want you to notice something about this wacky little power series. And that's it, excuse me. That's that this power series um, has an X in it. That's why it's called a power series. Well, that's not why it's called. <laughs> but it the thing that makes it a power series is that it has this X minus A raised to the N. Now, think about what this is. What it is, this guy right here is a sequence. And this guy right here, this little x, is just like you would think. It's an independent variable. Independent variable. All right? Now, think about how a regular function works, right? It works like a machine, right? You get, whoa, this is going to be an ugly-looking machine. And we put x's in. This is our machine. It works on it. And out pops an f of x, right? And f is just a rule that assigns a y value to an x value, et cetera, et cetera. All right? In a power series, what we have is a series-valued function of a real variable. So what happens is you give me an x value, I plug it into this series, and then I look at the series. So, for example, if I were to throw something like this at you, let's go n equals 0 to infinity of, uh, let's go, I don't know, n over 2 to the n times x minus 1 to the n. All right, so I got, notice that this guy right here, that's my sequence, and then this is my x value. Now, you might look at this thing and say, okay, what is really going on here? Well, let me explain a few things, because one thing that's really important that I want to make sure I make note of before we forget is this a right here is called the center. And I'll explain why that's the center here in just a sec. So this is a power series centered at A, all right, at x equals A. So the center of this thing would be x equals A. So in this case, the center, the center is at x equals 1. Now, let me show you what's going to happen here. Let's just play with this guy just for a second, all right? So let's suppose that x equals 3 x equals 3. Wouldn't that imply that the series that we got out of here would be n equals 0 to infinity of n times, well, if x is 3, then I end up with 2 to the n, right? 3 minus 1 is 2, over 2 to the n. These guys cancel, and I end up with, this, with the series n equals 0 to infinity of n. Now, it doesn't take a mathematician to, well, I guess it does, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that this guy diverges. The limit doesn't approach zero at infinity. It goes to infinity, so it's going to diverge. Well, excuse me, let's see if we can come up with something that does um, converge. Like, for example, how about x equals 1? Let's see what x equals 1 does. Let's see, I got n equals 0 to infinity. Wait a sec, this would be n over 2 to the n times 0 to the n. Oh, crud. This is just the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 0, which clearly converges to 0, right? You're just adding up a bunch of zeros. Well, let's do something a little bit more compelling. How about let's at, let x equal uh, 2. And remember, x can be anything. You can pick any number from negative infinity to infinity and play with it. The domain of these is going to be all reals unless, of course, you got weird square roots or something like that. But let's not get into that for now. So this would be n equals 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n times 1 to the n, right? 2 minus 1 is, is uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 to the n. So this becomes the series n equals 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n. Now, you might look at this and say, well, Ripley, does this thing converge or diverge? Well, there's a whole multitude of, of tests that we could use to try that. I would use ratio tests. Ratio tests, look, this looks a lot better. Let's do the ratio. Let's check to see if this thing um, converges by the ratio test. So we'll go by RT. This is a good little, little um, uh, this is a good little review. So as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1, so I've got n plus 1, over a sub n. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about this. I just had a kid walk in. I apologize. 
over, oh, that should be an a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. I just had a yellow kit, sorry, everybody. Uh, the absolute value of that is going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n over 2 to the n. We can rewrite this as the limit as n. This should be an absolute value, but we don't really have to worry about that because everything's going to spit out positives, right? This is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over 2 times 2 to the n times 2 to the n over n. This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n, absolute values, I'm getting a little lazy, sorry, times 2 to the n over 2 times 2 to the n. That's what 2 to the n plus 1 is, right? Hey, look what happens. Those go away, they become 1, these cancel, and I end up with 1 half, which is less than 1, which implies what about the sum as n goes to infinity or from 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n? Well, it converges absolutely. Outstanding. So what I just did is I, picked, I found a value for which it diverged. I found a value for which it converged kind of uh, vacuously. And now I found a value for which not only does it converge, but it converges absolutely. Remember the power of that. That's a good one. Now, here's the good news about a power series. Here's what I want to determine because I, I know that it converges at 1 at its center. It, I guess, think about it. It's every power series is always going to converge at its center. Always. Because I'm going to end up multiplying everything through by zero. So I'm always going to converge at my center. What I want to know is when this thing, I want to know all of the values for which it converges or diverges. All right? So let's go back. We're going to take that same thing. We're going to sum n goes from zero to infinity of, what did I say? n over 2 to the n times x minus 1 to the n. By the way, just like always, let me let me step back a sec. Just like always, if I wanted to, I could list terms. My first term is going to be c sub 0, isn't it? Because anything to the 0 is 1. Clearly, at when n equals 0, x minus a is going to be 1. This is going to be plus c sub 1 times x minus a plus c sub 2 times x minus a squared plus dot, 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 c sub n x minus a to the n plus dot 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 and it goes on forever. So that's really, that's all we're doing with a power series. There's nothing to be afraid of with these guys. I'm going to trade change back into a black pen just, to, just for emphasis. Now, there's the good news. The wonderful news about power series is there's only one test. There's only one test for when it converges and or diverges. All right, happy smiley face, and that is the ratio test. It's the only one you're ever going to use. So you always start this. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to write it up as though you'd see it in a, in a um, um, as though you see it in a textbook, and it's going to look. It would look something like this. Determine it uh, the radius and interval of convergence. for the series. Not, it's not just any series, it's a power series. Because remember, if it's not a power series, then it's either going to converge or it's going to diverge because there's no variable in it. We only worry about radii and interval of convergences if they have a variable in it. If you can hand me a number and I can plug it in for the x and then I can see how the thing runs. But I don't want to I don't have the kind of time to run through every possible number that x can be. So in one fell swoop, watch what happens. I'm going to go by RT. And I know right now you're like, what is this radius and interval of convergence? Well, just wait, simmer down. Everybody settle down. By RT, the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of leeway here. All right. I'm going to well, remember how I always go. I go n plus 1, and this is going to be times x minus 1 to the n plus 1, divided by 2 to the n plus 1 over, and then I just divide n times x minus 1 to the n over 2 to the n, right? This is a sub n plus 1. This guy right here is a sub n plus 1. This is a sub n. This is how the, the ratio test works. If you would like, now, I know I'm giving you a bit of a shortcut here, which always makes me a little bit a little bit nervous. But if you would like, you can simply write this as n plus 1 times x minus 1 
to the n plus 1. These are for my students, by the way. Anybody else's students, you can do whatever the heck you, you want. All right, plus 1, and then times. And so instead of having to take that extra step to divide by the denominator, you can simply write this as 2 to the n over n times x minus 1 to the n. Just like that. Now let's do some algebra. I will demand of my students that you take that, that's supposed to be an infinity, that you take, that, that you uh, uh, pair up your terms. So I'm going to write this as 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n times 2, because that's what 2 to the n plus 1 is, times n plus 1 over n. You see I'm grouping the terms. And then x minus 1 to the n times x minus 1, which is what x minus 1 to the n plus 1 is, and then x minus 1 to the n. Taking this step gives us all kinds of delightful leeway. Okay, These cancel and become 1 because the racial lead coefficients is 1. This cancels and becomes a half. So what I end up with is the absolute value, again, hopefully, well, let's leave the absolute value there. This becomes uh, these guys cancel, these guys cancel. So I end up with the absolute value of x minus 1. Sorry, I don't know where that 2 came from. Oh, I do know where the 2 came from. But x minus 1 halves. Okay, which is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 over 2. Because the um, quotient of an absolute value is the absolute value of the quotient. I can use it either way. Now, you've got to remember, we're dealing with the ratio test here. So the ratio test says what? The ratio test says that if this thing is going to converge, after you apply the ratio test, then, it, then this limit at infinity has got to be less than 1. All right. Now, if that's true, then that implies that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 2. Now, this is where it gets fun. This guy right here is referred to as, this guy right here is referred to as the radius of convergence. The reason is, the reason is, since this is centered at x equals 1, so if you look at the real number line, if my center is at 1 and my radius of convergence is 2, then everything from negative 1 to 3, everything in here, as long as I am less than 3 and greater than negative 1, it is guaranteed to converge. Why? Because those are the values that we're dealing with that the, that the ratio test spat out, right? Again, watch. Watch me do a little bit of... Watch me do a little bit of algebra down here. I know that this is true if and only if uh, x minus 1 lives between negative 2 and 2, which implies that x lives between negative 1 and 3. Oh, right? Because the radius is 2. Think of a radius in one dimension as just being an open interval from a center outwards, right? So again, you know, if you had the open interval from 0 to 4, the radius of that would be 2. If it were the open interval, interval from 7 to 10, then the radius of that would be 1 and a half or 3 halves. All right, so think of it that way on, with open intervals, the way that those work. I've also referred to them in my class as open balls of dimension 1. Okay, now, so the radius of convergence is 2. We solved for x. There's one problem. We don't know what happens at negative 1 or 3. So we haven't found the true interval of convergence. We do know for sure that the open interval from negative 1 to 3 is going to converge for all values on that interval. But I need to test my endpoints. And this is a huge part. Test endpoints. And I always write it. Test endpoints. All right. So. We test, now, let me back up. Let me slow down a sec. Why do we test endpoints? Well, we test endpoints because if I plug negative 1 in for x up here, then when I took the, the uh, ratio test, when I used the ratio test on it, the negative 1 and 3 would be the values for which I got exactly 1. And remember, if the ratio test equals exactly 1, then you've used the wrong test. So what we do is we simply say, all right, here we go, let x equal negative 1. Well, this implies in a puff of algebra that I end up with the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n times negative 2 to the n, which hopefully you can see relatively quickly that this becomes negative 2 to the n over 2 to the n is negative 1 to the n. So this is negative 1 to the n times n, right? Now look close. 
It's alternating, no doubt about it, but just because it alternates does not mean that it converges. So let's be really, really careful with that, okay? Clearly, this thing diverges. Why does it diverge? Why does it diverge? So think about that. Why would it diverge? Well, because the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero. And I'm done. All right, how about let x equal positive three? I'm just testing the endpoints is all that I'm doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, x equals three. This implies the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of n over two to the n times two to the n, right? Three minus one to the n is two to the n. This is equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of just n, which we just said diverged again because the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, n is not equal to zero, which implies my interval of convergence is equal to the open interval from negative one to three. Now, everything else in that open interval converges, everything, but the endpoints do not. Now, I want you to, let's, let's go back and look at our form of the power series. I got, yeah, 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 C sub n, x minus a to the n. Now, x equals a is the center. Now, I'm going to show you another series that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's do the sum as n goes from n. Let's do a 2 to the n, that's our good friend, over n factorial. All right? Uh, times x minus, let's go x plus 4 to the n. Okay? All right. So clearly a power series. This is my sequence. This is my independent variable that I'm plugging in. If I needed to list terms, I, I totally could. So where am I centered? At x equals negative 4. So whatever interval I come up with is going to be centered at, at x equal negative 4. All right, but something crazy is going to happen here. I'll show you why. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, all right, here we go. But, so by ratio test, I'm going to determine the radius and the interval of convergence. So by the ratio test, now I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 2 to the n plus 1 times x plus 4 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 2 to the n times x plus 4 to the n. Now what's this equal? This equals, let's pair our stuff up real quick and we'll do some algebra um, just kind of on the fly. This is going to be 2 to the n times 2 over 2 to the n times x plus 4 to the n times x plus 4, because that's what x plus 4 to the n plus 1 is, over x plus 4 to the n, and then times, now this is the tricky part. Remember, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. And look at what happens. 2 to the n's go away. These guys go away, right? These guys go away. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times x plus 4 over n plus 1. Now, what is that? What is the limit as n goes to infinity? Remember, as far as this limit is concerned, that guy right there is a constant. If I let n go to infinity, what is this? This is 0. 0 is always less than 1. Now, what does that imply? If this limit equals 0. Notice we didn't end up with some absolute value of x plus 4, right? What does that imply? It's always going to be 0, irrespective of what x you give me, which implies that my radius is what? Radius of convergence is infinity. All values of x from negative infinity to infinity. You hand it to me, I plug it in, because as I go, I don't care if it's negative 10 trillion 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 Googles it's still going to die because n plus 1 is in the denominator and the numerator is a constant. Likewise, on the positive 10 trillion 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 Googles. The radius is infinity, and the interval, the interval is from negative infinity to infinity. Now, why is that? What about that? What about this power series right here makes this interval from negative infinity to infinity all reals? Well, that's easy. It's a factorial. 
Factorial always wins. Factorial almost always wins. Let me do one more example. Do one more example, and then um, we'll kind of, excuse me, we'll sum this up in a nice little bow. How about this guy? What if I did the sum? This one will be super simple. And goes, nah, nah. let's go n factorial times x minus 1 to the n. Now, look close. What's going to happen here? Well, again, by the ratio test, by r t, limit as n goes to infinity, of the sum of n plus 1 factorial x minus 1 to the n over, whoops, n plus 1, over n factorial times uh, da, 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 x minus 1. Now, what's going to happen here? This thing, hopefully you just see that this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1, because n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. So we'll get that n plus 1 times n factorial over n factorial, right? That's what this guy becomes. Those cancel. And then clearly this becomes times x plus 1. Let's not forget to put these guys. Hoot, hoot, right? Or x not plus 1, x minus 1, sorry. Now, this is a fancy one. Because I always say that that factorial always wins. Well, almost always wins, except what happens if x equals 1? Because clearly, the limit as n goes to infinity of this is always going to equal infinity, except if x equals 1. If x equals 1, I have the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 times 0. Absolute value of that. Hey, guess what that is? That's 0. It converges. Now, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story, the one takeaway, and we talked about this earlier, is every power series converges at its center. In this case, at x equals 1. In this case, at x equals negative 4. It's called a center for a reason. It will always converge at its center. Now, sometimes it will only con converge at its center, as is this case. Any other number, you plug any other number into this and the limit equals infinity, which clearly is not less than 1, which is a frowny face, right? So it's either going to be, we have, we have three things that can happen here, all right? So for the power series, uh, c sub n times x minus a to the n, as n go, that's an a by the way, as, a, as n goes from 0 to infinity, all right? We know one of two things is going to happen. Uh, the series converges, converges on what? Well, it's going to be centered at a, right? So what we're going to have is we're going to have an a minus some radius to a plus some radius. r is our radius, is our radius which is determined by the root test, or excuse me, by the, by the ratio test. Do. It's going to converge, converge for all reals on, there's my bell, i got to get out of here in just a sec, from negative infinity to infinity, kind of like this guy over here. And then last but not three, only convergent at x equals a, which is the center. All right. That's good times. The beauty of a power series is it all, it, it, we only have one test to determine convergence, and that's the ratio test. The tricky part about convergence, or excuse me, about power series is once you've determined when the thing converges, you got to test your endpoints of your interval. We'll talk more about that. I might sum the whole thing up in one, one other little uh, uh, problem here in just a sec. But uh, the bell rang, so I'll pop back into this video here, and I'll finish it up here in, in a minute, okay? Hey everybody, it's Ripley. Sorry about that. Uh, it's one of the perils of, of trying to record these videos when you're doing it in the middle of the day. Okay, so let me do one more series for you, just from start to finish, so you can see. <laughs> there goes the bell. Um, just so you can see how it's done. I'm going to do the series. Let's go. Let's make it interesting. From one to infinity. Let's go x uh, plus three to the n over n. Okay, keep it simple. Is it a power series? Yes, because it's got this independent variable in it. Remember, one over n would be the sequence value that, or the sequence that goes into the series. All right, so here we go. So by ratio test, they always start the same thing. Well, again, we're going to try and find the interval and the radius of convergence. Okay, we're going to find those two things. So by ratio test, limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, now remember, I told you you can go x plus three 
to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n over x plus 3 to the n. Right there. Okay. Now, this is kind of one of those pause a beat moments where you get to clean things up algebraically. This becomes the limit as n goes to infinity, the absolute value of x plus 3 to the n times x plus 3 over x plus 3 to the n times n over n plus 1. And these guys cancel. Goodbye. Goodbye. And hopefully you can see that what you end up with as n goes to infinity is this just equals the absolute value of x plus 3. Doesn't it? Right? Because n over n plus 1 as n goes to infinity is 1. Now, again, according to the ratio test, this has always got to be less than 1, which tells me what? What do I got? Well, I'm centered at negative 3, right? You agree that my center is at negative 3. This guy is, ra is my radius. Once you have the absolute value of x minus a is less than some value, we'll call it c, this implies that c is equal to your radius. But if there's any constants hanging on anywhere, you got to get rid of them. All right, so I've got my radius, sweet, that's one. Now, you can probably tell that if it's centered at negative three, and my, uh, hold on just a sec, I'll meet you back here in a, okay. <laughs> got rid of the bells, got rid of the announcements. I promise I'm gonna finish this video, I swear to God. All right, like I said, since it's centered at negative three and the radius is one, you can probably tell that it goes from negative four to negative two, but let's check. All right, so I know, uh, let's see, if this is true, that implies that x plus 3 lives between negative 1 and positive 1. If I subtract 3 from both sides, I get negative 4 is less than x. <clears throat> Excuse me, is less than negative 2. All right. Again, you can see that the radius, since it's centered it at negative 3, you can see that the radius is 1. Now, we have to check the endpoints. So we check endpoints. The nice thing about checking endpoints is it's real simple and I am not going to demand a whole lot of rigor in the endpoints when you tell me whether or not it converges or diverges at the endpoint. So we let x equal negative 4. Now that should show you relatively easily that as n, n goes from 1 to infinity, if I plug in negative 4 into this guy right here, I get negative 1 to the n over n. Now, like I said, remember back when I, when we had alternating series as is, you would have to go through the process of saying that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0, which it does. You would have to say that 1 over n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n, which it is. So this thing converges by the AST. When you're checking endpoints in power series, you don't have to go through that, but there's a warning. You can simply say this. You can say it converges, by AST. You still have to tell me why it converges. But the warning is this, if you quote this incorrectly, you're going to get popped for points. So be very careful. Okay? So how about let x equal negative 2. We should be able to see relatively easily that if I put negative 2 into this guy, I end up, let's see, end up 1 to infinity with 1 over n, which we know what? It diverges. Why? You could either say p equals 1, or you could say harmonic. Either one of those, all right? So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the interval goes from, well, it's inclusive at negative 4, and it's non-inclusive at negative 2. So we would simply write this as negative 4 to negative 2, which means what? It means that this power series converges. You hand me any x value between negative 4 and negative 2, non-inclusive, it's going to converge. If you hand me negative 4, it'll converge. If you hand me negative 2, meh, not so much. Anything outside of that interval is going to diverge. It guarantees us that. Okay, cool. I wanted to walk you through one of those start to finish so you see how it works, so you see how much work you have to put into the endpoints, which is very little. You just got to make sure that you quote the, the correct test, and we're all set. Sorry for all the fits and starts as far as trying to get everything done, but um, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> um, have a good one. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.